Consider this typical scenario. You write some code and you run your program, but something goes wrong. You know there is a problem because you're not getting the result that you expect, or perhaps you're getting some cryptic error message. For example, here is a program that's intended to calculate an average of three numbers. By doing the math myself, I would expect an answer of 3.333. But when I run the program, I get an answer of 3.0. The traditional Java method of tracking down bugs in your program is to use the system.out.println statements to write out the value of a variable. When one of these statements executes, a line is written to the terminal window. That certainly works, but it has a number of drawbacks. 1. Before you run your program, you have to decide what you want to output and where you should put these statements. 2. In the output that's generated, it's often difficult to match the lines written out to the statements that generated them. 3. When you're done, you have to remove all the println statements that you added. Now let's talk about using a debugger. Right from the start, the name debugger is a misnomer. The debugger will not remove bugs from a program. If it did, the work of a programmer would not be very difficult. With a debugger, you use a very different approach. Rather than looking at output after the program runs, a debugger allows you to walk through your code step by step and look at the values of your variables as your code executes. In order to understand how to use a debugger, we have to introduce a new concept called a breakpoint. A breakpoint is a marker on a line of code where the programmer wants the program to pause. When you want to debug your program, you set one or more breakpoints in your code, and when the program gets to a line with a breakpoint, it pauses and gives you control. To set a breakpoint on a line, you click in the column to the left of the code. When you click, a red stop sign shows up to indicate that a breakpoint has been set. You can set as many breakpoints as you want. Breakpoints are toggles. That is, if you click on an existing breakpoint, the breakpoint is removed. Let's set one breakpoint right at the first line of code where this program starts. When you're debugging a larger program, you have to decide what would be a logical place or places to set breakpoints. Once we have our breakpoint or breakpoint set, we're ready to run. When we run, we see two important things. First, in our source code window, there's a little arrow on top of the breakpoint. The arrow always points to the line that the code is about to execute. What has happened is that the program has started running and has paused at the breakpoint. At this point, you are in control of the program's execution. The other thing that happened is the debugger window with a number of different panels has opened. At the bottom, there are a number of different controls. At the beginning of my program, there are three assignment statements. The step button allows me to execute code one line at a time. I'll click it three times. As I do, notice that each time I click, the little arrow will move down to the next line. Also, notice that in the debugger window, as I click the step button, each local variable and its value is added to the local variable's pane. The next line contains a method call. If I were to hit the step button now, the entire method would return the resulting value, and the debugger would pause at the next line, which is a println statement. However, I want to see what's happening inside the method. At this point, I could add another breakpoint down here, but instead, I'll click on the Step Into button. When I do, notice that the arrow moves down inside the method. This first executable line calculates the sum of the three parameters that were passed in. On the left side of the debugger window, there's a panel called the Call Sequence. This panel tells you what method calls were made to get the program to the current method. Here you can see that the main method 
has called the Calculate Average method. Of course, we know this because we stepped our way through the entire program. But in a larger, more complicated program, you will often set a breakpoint in a method that is called from many places in your code. When the debugger pauses inside of a method, you often want to see how it got there. This panel serves that purpose. In the Local Variables panel, you can see that the variables val1, val2, and val3 were successfully given the values 2, 3, and 5. If I step the code once, you can see that the method correctly adds the values and gets a sum of 10. Now let's step over the next line to see what we get for the average. In the Variables panel, you can see that it gave us an average of 3. Looking back at that last line of code that executed, you can see that the variable average was declared as an int, and that was the problem. It should have been declared as a double. At this point, if I wanted to continue execution of the program, I could click on the Continue button, and the program would run until it hit some other breakpoint or finished. But in this case, now that I know what the problem is, I can exit the debugger by clicking on the Terminate button and fix the error. After fixing the error, I'll set my breakpoint again and run. Again, the debugger stops my program at the breakpoint. Now we can set another breakpoint right after my method calculates an average. And click on the continue button to let it run to that point. Now we can see that the method has calculated the correct answer, 3.33333. In summary, the debugger is an important tool for diagnosing programming errors. Allowing you to step through your code will help you identify where you have made a mistake. Through the use of breakpoints and related debugger controls, you can control the incremental execution of your program. With the Call Sequence panel, you can find the path that got you to a particular breakpoint. The Variables panel is most important as it allows you to see the value of your variables. Using the debugger will help you track down errors much quicker than just using println statements. Once you incorporate the debugger into your daily development routine, you won't know how you got along without it.